This project started off about trying to find a way to take theatre to people at home, but keeping it live. So motion capture had to be able to be captured live and transmitted to audiences all around the world via a server. My role was to uh, devise and direct a short piece of performance to be seated within VR. Uh, and I think most interestingly for me was finding out how a fully VR performance would be able to carry quite complex narrative structures and senses of dramaturgy which for me are important to liveness. My whole work is looking at how theatre or rather performance can exist in different mediums. So not just person to person, uh, audience and human and human interacting in the same space, uh, but how what I would identify as key tenets of performance, be that liveness or be that sense of dramaturgy, be that complex narrative structures, how they can be brought about without necessarily having two humans sharing the same space at the same time. And we've created a short VR performance that uh, is to be explored by four people at a time, with one live performer in the space with an avatar. Uh, and we've been looking at sort of short narratives that explore uh, the stories of expedition leaders who never returned. Now, although the reality you are about to go into may seem familiar, it is not. Right. Have you ever travelled through space and time using virtual reality, James? Yes, I have. He's a rock star! Oh, he knows exactly what he's doing! So we need to get you into your correct timelines. Right, can I have one explorer here, there, there, and there in the line, please? Thank you. Passageway connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Knowledge of terrible weather and were prepared for any disaster, or so you believed. Fleeing your ships, you and your crew set up camp atop the compacted iceberg with provisions enough to last three years or until a rescue mission could arrive. This is where we now find ourselves. But something happened that you did not intend. The provisions meant to last you and your crew whilst exploring the icy and uninhabitable surroundings begin to poison you and your minds. Here, Clary, you have the chance to make a different choice. Hand over your wages to me and attend to your crew. Fret not, we shall leave this place soon. So for the project that we've been developing here at uh, Rose Bruford College, using the Innovate UK funding, we have developed uh, several pipelines that allow us to control a virtual reality experience using our new streaming DMX protocol. What this means is that we've got uh, half a dozen VR headsets that can be tracked inside a space using Rose Bruford's uh, brilliant new motion capture studio. We have props that can be tracked, again using the same system, and we can see all that inside the VR headset as an audience member. 
We're then able to control the entire environment around us using a lighting desk. So all of the scenery, all of the visuals, the lighting, the props, everything is controlled using the lighting desk. So I think that virtual reality with it brings so many opportunities to do things that you cannot do uh, on a natural stage or sort of basic reality stage. So with that, there's a lot to explore and there's a lot of opportunity to create worlds and create realities and things that happen that are completely out of the natural world. But with that, you have to be keen and understanding how an audience is going to be receptive to that and how they're going to understand those things if technically they don't quite align with what they're feeling or they're seeing and what actually, their senses are naturally telling them are happening around them. I think that's the biggest challenge. Liveness for me as a performer is having intimate connections with the audience that can either change their mind or just affect them in a way that they didn't understand that they had, they could process feelings or uh, raise questions in their minds. And that happens momentarily, like when you meet somebody or you, or you have a connection with somebody. There's a part in this show where I say, follow me, follow me into the light. And it's pure trust that the audience member has with you. And that's something you can't get anywhere else. Normal motion capture or performing virtually uh, Everybody says it's the combination of theater and film because you can have the intimacy of film uh, while feeling like there's some sort of liveness that theater has, but this takes it to the extra level because it is actually live and happening, uh, which is really exciting because that's kind of the happy place for both of my passions of film and theater. So the long-term goals for this project for me are absolutely about creating a, a new pipeline that can be deployed into the theatre industry to enable anybody, rich and poor theatre companies, to be able to create their own versions of virtual theatre experiences. We've created this whole production in about five days on a budget of about £1,200. That's excluding our time. Yeah, that's, that's an incredible thing for the industry to be able to, to take all of that really high-end technology and put it into a small package that can be deployed in a, uh, to, to, to any venue, effectively. Uh, in the short term, I really want to see this project become a, an opportunity to demonstrate that, that pipeline, to be able to invite artists in to, to see how we work with it so they can copy, uh, and to really refine the processes so that we have a, uh, a stable platform that, between Copper Candle and Rose Bruford and our partners, we're able to provide to other partners who want to come and join us on our journey.